Hi, everybody. It's Peter Schiff. It is Christmas Eve, December 24th, 2009. Although our friends in Congress and President Barack Obama are actually turning it into the nightmare before Christmas for American taxpayers. Uh, first of all, we got a press conference earlier this morning from Barack Obama that they've got the health care thing pretty much sewn up. Uh, it's practically a done deal that we're going to get this package passed, as I mentioned yesterday in, in my video. But also, while the congressmen were busy, uh, you know, getting this health care uh, plan uh, through Congress, they also managed to increase the debt ceiling up to about $12.5 trillion. Apparently, that's only going to get us through the next couple of months. They're expected to raise it again up to about $14 trillion. But, you know, something else that Congress did or the, the Treasury Department did today, they got very little press, was that they removed the caps on the losses that they were covering for Freddie and Fannie. The, the, the Treasury had guaranteed up to $200 billion of losses for each of Fred, each for Freddie and $200 billion for Fannie. That's $400 billion of losses that the Treasury had committed U.S. taxpayers uh, to suffer for bad mortgages at Freddie and Fannie. But apparently, that's not enough. What they decided to do was remove the cap. And so for, from now until 2012, the Treasury is going to cover 100% of the losses at Freddie and Fannie. Imagine that. I mean, they don't even think that the $400 billion is enough. Because I think up until now, they've only lost around $100 billion. So they still had $300 billion to go. And they were so afraid of, of the problems that they said, you know what? We know they're going to lose much more than $300 billion. So we're going to cover all their losses, which is probably another reason why they had to raise the debt ceiling. I'm sure that even the $14 trillion they're talking about isn't going to be enough. And, of course, you know, the, the president is trying to say that this health care bill is going to reduce the deficit. He, he touted it as the biggest deficit reduction bill, I don't know, in the last decade. Uh, it's not going to reduce the deficit. It's going to add to the deficit, again, which is why they have to raise uh, the debt limit. Anyway, moving to the markets, we had a very quiet market today. The Dow was up about 50 points. We had a holiday shortened session. The market closed at 1 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. Gold was up about $18 an ounce, and the dollar was generally lower. Now, also up on Capitol Hill today, I read that the congressional investigation into the cause of the financial crisis is starting today. And I read that they've got over 200 people that they've invited to testify. Now, I contacted this committee, you know, when I first heard about it, offering to testify, telling them about my credentials and hoping that they would call me. Of course, they're not asking me. Now, you know, if you actually go to YouTube where you're watching this video, and if you type in the word, word financial crisis in YouTube and search, the Peter Schiff was right video comes up on the first page. You would think that the people who are holding this investigation would want to at least have the person who predicted the financial crisis on the panel of witnesses where they're trying to figure out what caused it. I mean, I wrote an entire book predicting the financial crisis. You know, I've been invited to speak at conferences all around the world, and they pay me to go. You know, I go to Washington for free, but they, I've gone to Poland. I've gone to Saudi Arabia because it, even in that part, those parts of the world, They've learned about me. They knew that I predicted the financial crisis, and so they wanted me at their economic conference. Yet in Washington, D.C., it's a three-hour train ride away. They still haven't figured out that, that, I, that I predicted the crisis. You'd think that they'd want me up there. You know, it seems like the only way I'm going to get congressmen or senators to listen to me, the only way I'm going to get my insight into Congress is if I go there and join. I need to win this Senate race. I need to go in the United States Senate because that's the only way any of these senators are going to listen to me. Because no matter what I do as a private citizen, no matter how many predictions I get right, they're not going to, they're not going to seek out my advice. Now, I also wanted to comment on yesterday's video blog. I saw a lot of uh, comments about the constitutionality or unconstitutionality of uh, the health care bill. And one of the topics that I saw discussed on my website, and I also saw it on other websites, had to do with the mandate. I pointed out that, you know, it's unconstitutional for the federal government to require American citizens to buy something uh, from another American citizen. We're being required to buy health insurance from a private company. 
Now, there's nothing in the Constitution that, that authorizes the federal government to do that. Now, I saw people bring up the fact that, well, it's kind of like automobile insurance. We're required to buy automo automobile insurance, and this is the same thing. It's not the same thing. It's night and day. First of all, the requirement to buy automobile insurance is not a federal requirement. That is a state law, and not every state requires it. And we have to remember that there's a difference when it comes to the Constitution between what the states can do and what the federal government can do. You see, the Constitution grants powers to the, to, to the federal government. And if the federal government isn't specifically authorized to do something, it can't do it. The Constitution is different for the states. It denies powers to the states. So if the Constitution doesn't say the state can't do it, then the state can do it. Now, of course, each state is also governed by its own Constitution. But our, our national Constitution doesn't, doesn't say that the states can't require you to buy insurance. But since it doesn't give the federal government that power, it doesn't have it. But also, there's even a bigger difference. When the states require you to buy insurance, they're requiring you to buy liability insurance. That's because if you get into an accident, they want you to be able to pay to repair the damage that you caused to other people. But they don't require you to buy collision insurance, which would cover your own automobile. You're free to have collision or not have collision. That's still your choice in every state. But when it comes to health insurance, this is not about the damage that we might do to other people. This is requiring us to buy insurance to protect ourselves, which right now not a single state does with respect to, uh, to automobile insurance. And of course, you don't have to buy collision if you don't drive a car. You can opt not to have a car. You can, you can take the bus. You can ride your bike. And therefore, you don't have to buy uh, the, the, the automobile insurance if you don't want to use the public roads. In fact, you don't need automobile insurance if all you're going to do is drive your car around on your own private property. But on the health insurance, the government is going to require you to buy health insurance, and there's no way around it. You've got to buy it. There's no way to say, I don't want to, because it's not simply uh, requiring you to do something if you drive. As long as you're alive, you've got to buy this, this insurance. So you, th th this is night and day. Um, but, but anyway... I just wanted to, to mention that. I'm just if I had anything else I wanted to talk about, I made a couple of notes. Um, I think that's it. <laughs> but anyway, uh, have a have a have a Merry Christmas uh, to everybody. I'm sure I'm not going to be brought blogging again on Christmas Day. Maybe I'll do something the day after. Uh, but anyway, let's try not to think about all all the problems uh, that uh, that the government is in the process of creating, and and, and just enjoy the holiday. And I'll be back again uh, sometime soon. Take care, everybody.